Hello and welcome to this course on e-learning. In this course, we're going to cover how to incorporate e-learning, which is one of the hottest growing industries, into your business. This course is divided into three modules. Module 1 covers recording video lessons. Module 2 covers uploading and creating your course. And Module 3 covers monetizing and managing your courses. By the time this course is over, you'll know how to leverage e-learning to empower your customers as well as generate leads and revenue for your business. So without further ado, let's dive into the first module. Okay guys, welcome to Module 1. In this module, our expert will be teaching you about recording your video lessons. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, guys, so in this lesson, which will be a pretty quick one, we're just going to go over some of the basic ways of recording video content for your e-learning product. Most of these you're already familiar with. That's why this is going to be a pretty quick lesson. However, I want to cover three specific ones. Number one is basically just a PowerPoint presentation. Now, a PowerPoint presentation is easy enough to set up. Most of you have set that up many times. The question is, how do you turn it into a video? And there's two options. Option number one would be to have a script that you read through carefully in a well-presented manner and record that prior to trying to make the video. So you just record the audio and once you've got the audio recorded you then import that audio right here into your slide and you set it to if you go to playback to hide during the show play across slides and probably start automatically as best on your first or one of your first slides. And then you would go through rehearse timings and just go through the entire slideshow and click through the presentation in synchronization with the audio that you're listening to. And then once you save that, when you export this to MP4, it'll be synchronized. The other option, if you're good at delivering things off the cuff, would be to forego recording your audio beforehand and just record it during an actual recording of the slideshow. So once your slideshow is all set up, just hit record slideshow and you're going to go through the entire thing, click through it, narrating in real time, and it'll record your narration, and that will be your finished MP4 when you export. One quick tip, though, is get yourself on camera, okay? Even if you don't like being on video, at a minimum, for the sake of your personal brand, have a picture of you on the first slide, at least when you're saying, hey folks, this is so-and-so, and in today's lesson we're going to discuss. You know, during that portion, that intro portion, it's a good idea to actually have yourself in the video at the beginning for the sake of your personal brand. Not a must, but a good idea. Okay, finally, once you've done one of those two options, either importing an audio file that you recorded beforehand or recording it in real time, you're going to come over here to File, you're going to Export, and you're going to export it as a video, MP4, at 1080p. That's the best way to do it. So that is the PowerPoint side of things. Now, let's have a look at screen capture, screen recording. Now, you can use various types of screen recording software. Probably the coolest one out there is, well, I shouldn't say that. There's many very, very cool ones. But one of the popular ones is OBS, because of all the settings that you can adjust. Okay, and OBS, basically you would come into your recording center here, you would come over to Source, and Audio is usually set up automatically, but you want to right-click, add a new source, and that source should be Display Capture, right there. We'll hit OK, and as you can see, here I'll move a window around, and there you can see our screen right there on screen being moved around. Let's go ahead and pull that back up so we can actually see what's going on. And there's a couple different settings that you can choose from. You can have it uh, capture your entire screen, or you can have it focus on just one window. So definitely play around with that. But you've seen these a thousand times. These are the over-the-shoulder tutorial style videos, kind of like we're recording right now. And you're just walking through a process and making sure that the important parts are captured right there on your screen. So let me go ahead and close this out before it interferes with my current video capturing software, which is Screencast-O-Matic, which is basically the exact same thing. Close this, close this, and let's come back over to my browser to talk about the final of the three ways that you can record your content, and that is on-screen talking head video of you, and guess what? You don't need to have 
a studio grade camera with a green screen and all that stuff. Uh, nowadays, if you look at the average smartphone, and I've got, uh, let's see, Google's Pixel, I've got Samsung Galaxy S9, and I've got iPhone 10 pulled up here. And what you'll notice is 12 megapixel camera. 12 megapixel <laughs> camera. Where is it over here? I'm sure I saw it. Oh yeah, there you go. 12 megapixel camera. All of these record video in at least 1080p HD at a pretty nice frame rate. But I think most of them now do 4K recording. So there's no need for you to go out and spend money on a super high-tech camera. And there's also no need these days. I mean, video content in general, the, the trending thing is for it to become a little bit more casual. Literally just you at your table, like this gal, you know, in her living room with her house behind her doing a video. That's, that's the trending thing these days. So don't feel like you have to go out there and break the bank on all sorts of studio equipment and green screens and special stuff and lighting. I mean, lighting is probably the one thing that you should invest in a little bit. Um, but don't go crazy because videos are getting easier to make on screen or in, excuse me, your uh, talking head style videos are more easy to make, less expensive to make. And the trend these days is casual. That's what appeals to most audiences today. And you can just do that with your smartphone right there. Go buy a small little tripod to put on your desk and, uh, or even, gosh, even a selfie stick would probably pass these days, although maybe not for a a high-end e-learning environment. But uh, that's it, guys. That's the three ways that you can easily record content for your e-learning course. Hey, folks. Welcome to Module 2. In this module, our expert will be covering uploading and creating your course. So get ready to take some notes, and let's jump right in. We're going to use a membership platform or an online course platform called Everlesson. And we're just going to start here from the dashboard. Uh, by the way, we're pretending that we are teaching people how to play the fiddle. Okay, uh, that's a personal hobby of mine. Not very good at it, but I do enjoy learning it. And uh, we'll just say for the sake of example that that's what we're teaching. Remember, you teach whatever you're passionate about or whatever you feel qualified to teach. Let's go ahead and click Create Membership here from the dashboard. And I'll call my membership, uh, we'll just call it Fiddler. Oops, let me get Caps Lock off there. Fiddler Membership. And over here, we'll call this uh, fiddle.memberportal.io. Well, we'll call it Fiddler Membership. That's the URL that we utilize there for Everlesson. Membership title. Now, the membership name is just for our purposes, for keeping things uh, organized from an administrative perspective. Actually, let me go ahead and make this a one. And membership title, that's what the customer sees, is going to be, let's call it... Fiddler to the max, okay? Membership description will say we teach all things fiddle from beginner to can find the training you need here. Now that applies to the membership, okay? It's not necessarily the course. In our case for today, we're just going to go through the motions of creating a beginner course with three lessons, okay? And that course will be part of this membership, and it may very well be the only part of this membership. Um, let's go to membership image, and I've already got a couple selected here. Let's go with uh, this image here of Antonio Vivaldi. And we'll go ahead and hit proceed. And here we can choose a cool theme. Um, in my case, I like just the standard uh, minimalist look here. Uh, so we're going to go with that one. Uh, if we had a logo, we could add a logo here, okay? Uh, or we could disable it and just not have it there. Um, I want you to know where the logo is going to go throughout this process when we see the uh, example pages later, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that turned on, and just keep in mind, this is where your actual logo would go, uh, anywhere that you see this from this point forward. Uh, I'm okay with the colors, I'm okay with the uh, the overall look and feel of it, 
Um, if we wanted to, we could change this background image to, uh, you know, let's grab our, our all-purpose violin image there. Of course, uh, I did not put the correct size image there. It looks like we would actually want a larger uh, resolution there. So let me go ahead and stick with our original image here from the library. Actually, let's grab something a little more, uh, what's the word, abstract. And let's go in here. And let's make sure I choose the correct. Oh, you know what? I think I, me I messed that up. Let's go over to background type, and this time we'll stretch. There we go. Much better. So um, you can customize this to look however you want. We're going to go ahead and hit save here to save the look and feel of the theme. I'm going to come back to my dashboard. And here's our membership that we created. Uh, the name of it that the customer sees is Fiddler to the Max. Um, and for our purposes, we're calling it Fiddler Membership. And let's go to uh, Edit Membership. And we're going to start the wizard here. Let me actually uh, delete that product. So it starts you off with a, a blank template product if you just want to go that route. We're going to go the easy route and start with the wizard. I'll build my course. And let's do new product. And here you have the option of going free, paid, or free plus paid uh, combination. Um, this is great for lead generation here. If you want to offer a free course, in fact, if I was going to offer a robust curriculum on how to play a violin, um, I would probably have the beginner course be a lead generation course. So something that they can get for free in return for their email address and maybe some other contact information. Um, for our purposes, I think we're going to go with paid. And we'll go to the next step here. And let's see, we'll choose JVZoo. I like JVZoo. Um, well, we won't talk too much about payment methods here. Most people will probably end up using something like PayPal or JVZoo, um, and that's pretty easy to set up. There's a lot of tutorials available uh, to help you in setting that up as well. I'll go ahead and choose JVZoo, hit next step, set up your product. So we need a product for this membership. We're going to call this Beginner. We'll call it Fiddler for Beginners. For, oops, let's see if I can spell. Probably want to be able to spell if you're going to do an online course. Uh, <laughs> let's see, description. In this course, we teach you the basics of playing the fiddle. And yeah, that's good there. Um, I don't. I, I want it to look good when we get the finished product, but I don't feel like typing too much and making you listen to my keyboard. So let's come over here to Wikipedia, and I'm gonna grab. Uh, oops, I grab this this paragraph here. Stick that in there, and we could have. I'm gonna disable the logo for this product. Um, we could have another image here. I'm just going to go with the original violin image that we used. Um, if you're looking for images to use with all this stuff, though, I would recommend uh, stock.adobe.com. They've got some pretty good prices. On average, I think each image costs you uh, maybe a buck or two or three a piece, uh, depending on what plan you choose. So that's actually where I got that image there. So let's go ahead and hit next. Our product has been set up. And I don't actually need any categories. And here we have an option for what types of lessons, meaning what types of modules, lesson pages, uh, that your people will go through uh, when they're going through the course. Um, the most typical thing is going to be video lessons. We're going to put three of those there. Uh, you could put a free giveaway option here. And the free giveaway option it could be something like a PDF of uh, recommended resources. Or, you know, something along those lines. We're just going to stick with the three video lessons, though. I'll hit next. Let's go ahead and type in our lesson name. Let's go with Lesson 1, Violin Basics. Lesson 2, we'll say, uh, hmm, maybe Violin Holds. How to hold. I'm trying to look back and, and think of what I learned and in what order when I first started off. We'll say how to hold a violin and 
for the last one, let's say uh, first song. Lesson three. Your first song. Next. And let's see. In this case, we're going to... Okay, so we've got descriptions here. Let's put this lesson will cover the parts of your violin and bow and how to use them for lesson two we'll go with how to hold your violin and bow properly and for lesson three we'll say uh, finally ready for your first song Mississippi oh, I hope I spelled that right stop stop all right that's the first one I ever played anyway next step is to actually add our videos now I actually went on YouTube for the sake of this and just found some videos that I like that have helped me learn the violin Obviously, you can't actually do that. You have to have your own videos if you're going to charge money for them. So uh, this is just something we're doing for the sake of example. Uh, let's go to Add New Video here. And Video Title. Just make that the same as the Lesson Title. Tags. Violin. With YouTube Video URL. And this is a good one here because it covers parts of the bow and violin. Grab that, stick that in there. So you can, uh, as you can see, there's lots of options for where to host your videos online, where to upload them to. Either way, they'll look, the, the video player will be within your actual membership here. And this is just how we link to it and make sure that it shows up. Let's go ahead and hit submit. Okay, and for lesson two, we want to grab um, let's do how to hold a violin, since that fits our description. So go to add new video. Stick that URL in there. Use the lesson name for the video title, which you don't have to do. But I'm doing it just to keep things simple. We'll hit submit. And for our last one here, let's go to add. And by the way, this is this tab that says Video Manager. That just refers to all the videos that we've uploaded to the membership. So later on, if we were to do this again, we'd be able to choose from these ones. So for the last one, let's say Mississippi Stop Stop here. Stick that there. title add that tag hit submit and we should be all set now let's go to next step and um, from from your perspective not so much the customers perspective perspective but from our perspective uh, we need everything organized by packages for transaction purposes uh, that's all the things modules that they will get access to when they make a purchase via a certain buy button or page and that's just how Everlesson organizes things for transaction purposes. So let's go ahead and call this one Fiddle1. One. Well, we'll call it Beginner Fiddle Package. Alright. And for the package description, this Amazing course teaches beginners everything they need to get started with the violin. All right, and for page or package contents, we'll go ahead and say 
lesson one. Um, true to violin parts. Lesson two. Uh, what was lesson two? Oh yeah. Violin and bow holds. Lesson three. Your first song. And just to make sure it looks good on whatever uh, page it might show up on within ever lesson, we'll go ahead and do this Alt Numpad 7 trick to add bullets. Let's go ahead and hit next now that our package is taken care of and let's customize your access emails so this is basically just a matter of um, determining what your customers are going to see in their inbox uh, along with their login information so this is their login information anything within the squiggly brackets here is going to be auto populated by information that came from the transaction so their name will automatically go in here uh, the URL for your membership uh, will go in there so all this stuff is taken care of. The only thing you want to add yourself is your actual support URL. So, you know, support.fiddle.com or whatever. I just made that up, obviously. And you could edit this however you wanted to. So if you want to put a big welcome paragraph in here or, you know, type happy fiddling or something like that, it's totally up to you. Let's hit next. And for the payment method, we already chose JVZoo, so that's auto-selected here. Let's go with $19.99 for the price. Value, don't shortchange yourself here, okay? If you've never created a video course before or created an online course, um, and you put a lot of time and work and effort into doing this, I mean, charge what it's worth, okay? Ch charge, charge, the amount of, uh, charge the amount that reflects um, the amount of work and, and how big of an achievement this was for you um, when it comes to the value obviously for the price you're gonna have to get you know financially smart and make sure that you're uh, choosing a price that's going to convert best and you might have to toy around with that and try different uh, a few different prices and, and split tests and stuff but uh, for our purposes let's go ahead and say we think this is worth 99 bucks per uh, per membership and the button code here would uh, Basically, uh, you get that from JVZoo, okay? And if you use the PayPal mode, then you'd have something else to stick in here. And like I said, they've got a tutorial on how to set up your payment uh, options. So for this, we'll just type in button code just to, <laughs> oops, uh, just to have a, a placeholder there. Let's hit save. And let's see here, public access public even if you have a package created no drip feed this is cool in case you want to slowly unlock um, automatically unlock certain portions of your course to people depending on how long they've been in the course um, let's see add resources this would be cool if you wanted to add some PDFs or something like that um, rating system if you want people to be able to rate your course I'm not gonna add that myself uh, add monetization. This is cool. You can actually uh, find ways to put monetization options inside of your course, like uh, banners and uh, clickable ads and that kind of thing. Um, add existing members. Not an option right now. And queue feature members. That looks like something they're adding in the future. Uh, so this is just special Everlesson stuff that you can add. We'll go to the next step. And our sales page, it gives us a... Uh, gives us a link for our login URL and our sales page right now um, neither of those are gonna look perfect well the login let's just go to it real quick the login page looks pretty much the way it's gonna look okay um, this is the one that we edited earlier remember you can customize it however you want um, this one here don't worry too much about what this looks like uh, this is just what gets uh, spit out automatically we have to actually go and edit the uh, sales page so let's go to exit wizard and here is our course, which is very cool. This is what we just created. We can actually go here to view product. And inside of our membership, if people were looking at this, they'd be able to go through here and click on all the three courses inside. Here's our about section. Let's go and look at an actual course. 
and here's the actual course itself and there's our video and that's where your video would go and they can navigate to different parts of the course um, and there's areas for comments and if we chose any of those other features like uh, drip feeding or allowing ratings and that kind of stuff that would all be visible here as well uh, you see people actually have the ability to take notes while viewing your course right here which is very cool um, discussions well, I'm not worried about that for our purposes right now and resources if uh, we had chose that add resource option and you had clicked on that and upload some PDFs uh, you can do that for each lesson so violin basics we could have a little PDF with a glossary of terms and a diagram or something along those lines it's totally up to you and um, let's see we want to basically finalize our sales page I think so let's come over here to sales pages and we've got our fiddler so we've got a fiddler membership sales page which is going to show let me just show you the one that automatically cranks out again ignore this this isn't uh, what it's ultimately going to look like after you edit it um, and if we we had more packages or pro excuse me products inside of this membership instead of just the beginner course they would all be shown down here and people could come to this general membership sales page and pick which ones they want um, and we're not going to do that right now uh, what I recommend is you create one course and send people to the sales page for it so we already saw this demo here um, let's go to the quote block and this is just some dummy test uh, uh, dummy text that they put in there let's change this to all right a little bit cheesy but it gets the point across let's save for that and let's go to create long description let's go ahead and grab this stick that in there we'll just pretend that that's our uh, our sales page uh, let's go ahead and grab one sentence here one sentence here another sentence there and this one here Turn those into bullet points. And never thought possible, we'll make that our headline. And this is basically just a WYSIWYG editor. If you've ever used WordPress or something like that, you're probably familiar with how this works already. Uh, we can actually even add images, and we would do that right up here. Uh, for our purposes, I'll just leave this as is, though. And if we come to our new and improved sales page, we can see here this is where your traffic would come. And they would, uh, I would recommend that you flesh this out and make it look a little bit better inside of that WYSIWYG editor and really get the point across. Um, with uh, a whole lot more descriptions of each lesson that sort of thing but uh, ultimately you send traffic here and they will click that buy button and that's how they'll get into your course and that's how you can begin making some money uh, by teaching people things that you're passionate about so uh, thanks for sitting through this video good luck setting up your online course or info product and we'll see you in the next one all right welcome to module three in this module, our expert will be teaching you about monetizing and managing your courses. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, guys, so we're here inside of the Everlesson dashboard again. We're going to talk quickly about monetization, how to set it up so that you can actually accept payments. And then we're going to get into the actual membership uh, management and monitoring. So if you'll recall, we've got a little sales page here that we created in the previous lesson. And uh, we can send traffic here and we can accept payments. However, we can't really accept payments yet because we haven't truly set up monetization yet. So we have to actually go through a little bit of a process here. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit for our uh, sale price of $20. And we've got all of this stuff filled out already from the previous lesson. 
Um, let's see, it is a one-time payment, as we determined already, and payment options we went with JBZoo. Okay, JBZoo is a great digital product marketplace and payment platform. And what we need is an actual button code, which means we have to actually create this product in JVZoo. And when I say product, I mean product listing, okay, so that JVZoo has something to process. So we're going to come over to JVZoo, and we're on the product creation page. We're going to give our product a name. Let's just call it Fiddler Course. And affiliates are a great way to get traffic on autopilot, so we're going to make this discoverable to affiliates. We're going to go show in our new public marketplace um, it is $20, so let's go ahead and do that. Then we're going to go to description. We're going to type in our description. Then we're going to go to categories. We're going to find one that seems to be somewhat related. Hopefully there's one for music or hab... Oh, here we go. Entertainment. Music. That'll work. Currency, US dollars, product price was what was it 1999 i think i'm going to go to quantity we can leave that unlimited allow sales launch date doesn't really matter it's not uh, applicable but we'll just leave it set to what it is uh let's see here commission payout percentage since we did have the affiliate option checked that means if anybody uh, finds our product on the marketplace and wants to promote it to their audience uh, we'll, we'll be willing to give them a certain percentage, so let's just say 25% for now. Uh, product subscription-based, it is not. It was a one-time. No dime sale, no time sale. Uh, we don't need to worry about this because it's not relevant to us. Uh, we want to accept payments through PayPal and Stripe. And we want to manually, manually um, approve affiliates if they request to promote. We'll just say, uh, give us a good way to contact you okay and that's a little message that affiliates will see when they try to request an affiliate link uh, let's see here support email address let's say uh, fiddler at support.com just making that up sales page URL we have that, so we can just put that right here. And we'll go to, uh, let's see, checkout template. We'll stick to the standard one, classic, if you will. Uh, receipt custom information. Let's go ahead and say, uh, please check your email for login details. It's just a little message that's added to the receipt. And let's see. Download slash thank you page. We'll want to grab the actual uh, login URL for our course, which for us was Fiddler Membership dot etc. And 45 day return period. That's fine. Uh, no physical delivery. Uh, let's see. No more information collection turn off our autoresponder integration since we're using Everlesson's autoresponder, but we could use uh, our own autoresponder if we really wanted to. The big thing here is going to be adding an external program integration. We're going to need that set up with a special URL that we get from uh, Everlesson. So we'll come back into Everlesson, and this is the payment notification URL. Go ahead and copy that. Come back over here paste that in there and that is about it we can now hit save product and while that's saving we'll come back over here and we'll talk about uh, what needs to go in this field now originally we just left a uh, placeholder in there while we were going through the actual course creation process in the previous lesson uh, but now it's time if we want to really accept payments uh, to actually find the button code for this from within JVZoo. And that's actually right here in the product details uh, area under buttons. We're going to grab this button here. Copy. I mean, you can pick whatever style you want. It doesn't really matter since we'll be using our Everlesson sales page for accepting payments. But we do need the button code at least uh, so that it's integrated correctly. We're going to go ahead and paste this here. And we'll hit save.
and voila, we are all set to start accepting payments for our Fiddler course. Now let's talk really quickly about the uh, campaign dashboard and monitoring your uh, campaigns, okay? So now, of course, since we just set this up literally in the previous lesson, there's no stats to look at. I do want to just sort of familiarize you with the dashboard and a couple of pages for monitoring stats in the future, because it is a good idea to keep an eye on how things are going in your members area. So obviously we've got some some pretty clear stuff. We've got a map that shows us where uh, members are in the world. Uh, we've got the member database with lists of members. Uh, we've got how complete our membership is and uh, you know this gives us an indication of what we still need to work on uh, we've got gamification we've got monetization so let's have a look at each of those respectively so here we've got our gamification uh, stats and again we don't have any because we just started this but what you, you're going to want to be looking at is seeing whether or not people are using your gamification when you award goals or points for the completion of each lesson you can actually come in here and see what members are actually going through the course uh, how many goals are completed um, how many badges are earned and that sort of thing and if you're not getting much engagement in that area you, you might have to do one of two things you might have to change the gamification a little bit more you know increase incentives make it more attractive or proactively market the concept of gamification so send out marketing emails to your members, reminding them, hey, by the way, if you earn you know X amount of points, you'll get a little reward. You'll get you'll unlock this free course, you know, this that or the other thing. Or hey, let's have a contest. Let's see uh, who can get through the course the fastest. The the next five people who finish the course, you know, X Y Z. So you might have to actually galvanize and get people to actually start working if you're not seeing the type of results on this page. Uh, that you want as far as gamification and progression through the course, uh, which is very important. Yeah, that's kind of the, the lifeblood of your uh, online uh, business. So uh, the next thing here is going to be monetization. Again, no stats because we just started, but uh, you, what you want to monitor here is get an impression of how many people are actually buying when they come to your page. Okay, so you've got impressions and clicks, and then you've got conversions. Okay, so how many people are coming to the page and how many people are actually buying what percentage if that's a low percentage obviously you're gonna to want to change something change something about the marketing the sales material the sales page uh, to make it more attractive so this is very important to monitor uh, because it has implications for your business and then of course we've got the members um, page here which will give you your members names when they join their last login uh, which is an important stat to uh, sort of keep track of um, because that gives you an idea of the level of engagement that your members have and the amount spent so pretty straightforward stuff just be aware that it's there and be aware that you do need to be monitoring this stuff and taking actions according to the information that you're finding here as you manage and monitor your online courses